couple weeks ago, we sent some soil off to go to a lab to get tested. You know, we're trying to get our garden all ramped up and ready for the season. And with that, uh, we wanted to do a little comparison against one of the store-bought kits. So we picked up this one here at Fleet Farm. It was $12.99. It says it's got 40 tests, but in reality, it tests like your, your three main fertilizer groups, your N, your P, and your K, and it also tests pH. With the one that we had sent off to the lab, it would cost us $20. We went up to our local farm co-op, dropped off our soil. They mailed it off, and it went to a place called Midwest Laboratories, which I believe is based on Nebraska. They do have representatives in different states to help you with some of this stuff. So when we did the store-bought test kit, uh, it came back with a pH somewhere around 6.5. We were very low in nitrogen and potash, which did raise a little bit of a red flag because... Uh, several years ago, I uh, dumped a whole lot of wood ash in there that I probably shouldn't have. So it seemed a little weird that that potash was low. Now, when we got the lab's results back, they were quite different. Um, the pH level was pretty close. It was uh, 7.0, so just a little bit more alkaline. You know, you're shooting for somewhere around 6.8. Uh, it did provide us a little bit more information. There was one thing that they have in there called CEC. It was something that was new to me. Um, it also gave us a little bit more detail in some of the minerals and, and items in there. But the, the one thing that it didn't have on that test was the nitrogen, and that really, I believe, came back to our co-op. I reached out to them and said, oh, well, why, didn't, why didn't you do this? And for some reason, they didn't think it would, that we needed to test their nitrogen levels. I'm not sure why, but that's what they thought. So I don't have that number to compare. Our potash came back in as very abundant or very high levels of that. So with the results being so different, I, ha I had to ask, you know, like what, what, what went wrong here? Could they really be that, that different? So I re originally reached out to Midwest Laboratories. I'm like, something's got to be wrong. They're, they're more expensive and everything. I was really hoping they were the wrong. I also had some questions about how to read some of the abbreviations and stuff on the report. And the guy sent back a great guy. He was like the Minnesota rep. He also uh, sent a guide on, you know, like, Kind of breaking out. Oh, this is what I look at. I look at the organic material. I look at this thing called CEC, which, in layman's terms, I guess, is it, how well your soil actually holds some of that nutrition. Uh, sent just a ton of information above and beyond what, what I asked for. Uh, very, very helpful. And he reassured me that you know he's a hundred percent you know positive. They certified. Get you know calibrations and all that stuff to make sure all the tests were the right so then it turned you know on to me and I'm like what did I mess up what did I do wrong and all the instructions so I went back and reevaluated that and everything seemed to be pretty pretty much dead on or, or I follow following these instructions the one area that there's a little bit of a gray area in there is they say you know you mix in one part soil so one cup soil and then five cups water you shake it up you let it sit and they say let it sit from anywhere from 30 minutes to 24 hours. I let mine sit probably for 30 minutes and five seconds. Like I wanted those results bad. So out of curiosity, I went back and this morning I reran the test again. Same soil, same water, everything, and I let it sit for 12 to 13 hours, and came back with results very very similar to the the lab. So I really think that's a big thing. And with that, I also sent an email off to these guys on that test asking, you know, what, what could I have done wrong? And the one thing that they suggested was the water or potentially that wait time. But they said, make sure you use distilled water when you're running this test. So do I feel 100% positive on this test? You know, it was kind of a gray area on running this test. And it seemed like, the, I mean, nothing changed other than the setting time. I've lost a little bit of faith in this. You know, it's not quite 100% dummy proof. There's a little bit of that gray area. So um, I do see a lot of value in that store-bought kit. I mean, you get results at a lot quicker rate. Uh, you also are able to run a lot more tests at a cheaper price. So, you know, throughout the summer, you can continue to run tests, you know, something like corn that uses up a lot more nitrogen. You can monitor that soil and make adjustments as needed. But with the prograde test, um, you get a little bit more detail and you just get reassurance. You know that that data is correct. I wanted this thing to be like the ultimate solution, the, the cheaper solution to getting your soil tested and 100% dummy proof. And 
It just seems like every time I start getting excited about some sort of product here, I, I just can't 100% stand behind it. You know, it's like I got that four-way wedge I was super excited about, and uh, that thing ended up lasting me about 10 minutes here. Now I got this kit here, and it's like, eh, I'm getting results, but it's not, you know, it's just not quite perfect. I want that I can drink milk every day type of product that I can share with you guys. This is the first time you've never used this product before. You're going to see how easy this is to do. Go ahead. This works in any milk carton. Wow, it is easy. <laughs> now I can have milk every day. So a few things that we are going to put into place this year is we're going to definitely start upping our, or our organic material. And with that, that's definitely going to come in the compost realm. Uh, we're going to probably build some more composting bins. We've also made one step where we've purchased a little bin that sits and hides behind your cabinet door where you can easily dump some of your scraps in there. So we've been dumping some of our coffee grounds in there, some apple cores and sunflower seed shells and, and different stuff like that uh, that has been going out into our little small existing compost bin. Uh, so we'd like to update that um, and, and make some adjustments that way. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.